So, just want to run through some quick uh, techniques, a um, few examples of how we can quickly set up a level, a uh, level example for a concept hammer girl. Um, just how you might go about starting a level um, if you've never done it before, you've never used Unreal for like that, anything like that before. So, first thing we want to do, step one, is go to File, New Level at the top. And uh, we can go ahead and create a default level, and that'll just give us some basic tools to work with, like the sky sphere, gives us the nice blue sky, a light source, um, and the player start. So if we press play, we won't spawn as Hammer Girl. Um, and that is because, if you remember from the first lesson, we had to set the game mode override. So if you press Window, down to World Settings, open the tab on the right hand side, and just select the game mode, or uh, whatever we called it in the first lesson. Set that, press play, and then we should be in a fresh level with a working player controller. Save that, call it level 1. Save, <coughs> and we're good to go. So, first thing we're going to need is a floor. Um, Something for Hammer Girl to walk on that looks a bit better than this uh, this floating BSP in the world. The easiest way we can do this is by adding a terrain. So to make a terrain, if we go over to the left hand side of the screen, scroll over to the landscape tab, click that, puts us in the mode where we can edit existing landscapes, create new ones if we need, uh, raise and lower the terrain, paint on different textures. So when we go over to the tab for the first time, should make us this big green sort of matrix grid. Um, it's pretty huge. This is probably too big for a level for the Hammer Girl concept. So if we go over to the left hand side under the section size tab. At the moment we're on 63 by 63. So I drop that down to 31 by 31. Still probably quite large, but should do for now. So once we're happy with that, 31 by 31, click on the material drop down. If we search landscape, we should get a list of all of the materials associated with our lands landscape shader. And the master material, the one that we want to select, is called landscape underscore mat. So if you go ahead and click that, I'll assign it to the terrain. We're we ready to press the create button here. Press create, makes the terrain for us. Like so. We don't need this floating BSP anymore, so we can delete that. Get rid of that. Cool, so a little bit more setup before we go ahead and start creating the level. So click the terrain um, to select it, go back over to your landscape tab, click that. Um, if you go over to the paint icon, click that. We've got all of these channels set up for different grasses, stone, uh, dirt textures and things. At the moment we start trying to paint with one of these, if we click, we should get the error message, this layer is no layer information assigned. Which have already the, we actually have these already set up um, by the material shader. We just need to assign them. So we click on the first one, the top one, grass on score one. Click the drop down list. There's only one layer information for this. Assign that. And just sort of go through every one of the layers. Click the drop down list. Just assign the layer that should already be created. This just holds the texture information for this specific channel. Once these are all set up, it's going to let us paint onto the terrain. So I've gone through there, assigned all of those. Now if I click one of the textures and try and paint, it should start to paint. Now when you first make a, a terrain like this, um, when we click to try and paint with one of the textures, um, it's not really giving us specific results that you'd expect to see in something like Photoshop when you're trying to paint. It's just filling in the squares. Um, this is incorrect, it's just because the engine is still trying to compile all of the shaders for the landscape material. So I'm just going through, I'm clicking each one of the layers, um, and I'm just painting it, painting it into the world just once, which will uh, force the engine to compile the shaders. So if we press build, the reason we've got all these horrible black lines, these cross-faced lines on the terrain is because it's 
just been created and we've not built it and set it into the scene yet. So I've gone through, I've painted at least once with all of my uh, all of my layers, which means every texture is going to get a forced compile on the shaders. Press build at the top. Press build. It should build all of the lighting um, and texture information in the scene. There's only one light, which is the sun. Um, and there's only one terrain that needs being built that we've just created, so it shouldn't take long. So now that's finished building. We go ahead and start trying to paint onto the train now. Still getting these square results. It's looking slightly better. That is because we're still compiling the shaders, so just go ahead and keep keep painting with different materials. Um engine's gonna keep compiling shaders as we go. So we're still getting the shader compiling uh, appearing every time we try and paint with one of these grass layers. But to show you what we're trying to achieve by waiting for the shaders to compile so much. If I click this ground texture, which is one of the first ones I clicked, um, which uh, which is compiled first, now when I paint, it's giving me exact results rather than just painting to the uh, to the whole square, um, like what he was doing previously. Not just whilst the engine's trying to figure out what each of these layers means and how they work, it needs to compile it first. Um, and because there's so many, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different layers, there's a lot of texture information that it has to go through. Um, you should only have to do this the first time you uh, create a new terrain or um, start working with the material, uh, the landscape shader for the first time. So now I've gone through and waited for all of the shaders to compile. Now when I paint, it's giving me better results. So obviously I don't want it to be all scrappy and uh, uh, messed up like this. So I'll just get everything back to a grass texture to begin with. So I've set my brush size to 5000, which gives me a quite a big range to paint in. Set the tool strength to 1, so it's going to paint 100% opacity every time I click. Click the top grass texture and just go ahead and paint over everything. So now I have one big square, all with the same texture applied to it. I'll go ahead and start painting some pathway, pathways in. Click the ground 3 texture. Um, 5000 is probably too big of a uh, of a brush size for what we're trying to achieve here. So zoom closer into the world, set that to about 1000 maybe. Uh, tool strength to 0.3, give us quite a nice low opacity. Um, I'm going to put it in unlit mode. It was in lit mode previously. Click at the top, unlit mode. Or you can press Alt 4 or Alt 3 alternatively. Um, unlit mode just gives us a bit of an easier time seeing what we're doing. So now when I start painting on the terrain uh, with the uh, ground 3 texture applied, it starts painting this nice sort of pathway texture. So I have a rough sort of level design in my head, um, what, what I try and make with this level. Um, so the easiest thing to do for me is normally just go ahead and get the uh, the pathways uh, blocked out um, for how it's going to look in the level. So I'm just going to be really quick and just sort of rough out some basic pathways that I want the player to take. So I'm just going to leave the train for now. Just switch back over to our uh, our place tab. Um, which is going to allow us to drop static meshes in the world and things. Um, it'll be much easier to sort of visualize what we're doing and just build it up slowly as we go. So we have a terrain. Um, and let's get some buildings in there now, just to give us some point of reference. So we go over to the hand painted environment folder, uh, into assets, into models. There's a big drop down list of all the assets we have at our disposal. So if we have a look for the houses we have to work with, we have a town hall. I'm just going to hold control. Um, and then when I'm holding control and I click additional buildings, it's going to multiple, multiple, multi-select them. So I'm just going to have a quick scroll through the asset model folder. Um, control click all of the buildings uh, that look interesting that I might want to use. Forge, uh, big house. So now because I've control clicked, I've got all these uh, yellow buildings selected like that. When I drag one in, I should drag every type of that building into the scene. So it's placed all the buildings on top of each other. That's fine. Let's go ahead and quickly space them out. So I'm just clicking, clicking the object. I'm just moving it out just so we can see what we're working with. Cool. 
So that was pretty quick for us. Now this is just a really nice way we can sort of visually see all of the uh, the meshes that we're going to use for this level really quickly. Go ahead and just start plotting things out. So I'm thinking this area to be sort of the main uh, entrance, the main gate leading into this town. So I want to just start throwing some buildings in there just to give me a rough idea of uh, scale, a uh, rough idea of how this is going to look. So I'm being quite loose with it for now. Um, I just want to get some meshes in the world uh, just to define a really quick play space uh, for the player. Um, and just give me an idea of scale. So just give it a bit of a starting point. We're going to want to build sort of a gate here, which will be the main entrance exit to the town. If we start scrolling through the, the model pack, the uh, the model folder, you notice we don't really have a suitable asset for that. We don't have a big sort of gate wall asset that we could use. That's fine because we've got a lot of uh, little objects, little meshes that we can sort of use to build up and create bigger um, meshes and things. So I'm going to put the stone fence in there. I'm just going to hold the alt key. When you're holding alt and you click um, an axis and move it, it'll duplicate your selection. It's not too high. Uh, I think maybe one more. Like so. Alt drag again. Leave it on there. It's probably a big enough wall I'd say for, for what we're trying to achieve. Looks a bit rubbish though, so what other assets have we got that we can just spruce this up with slightly? Um, we have a log, we can try that. So place log in the world. Um, if you tap spacebar, it just cycles for all of your uh, movement controls. So you've got scale, uh, you've got move, uh, and we've got rotate. So we're going to rotate this log, turn it like that. Move this into position. So, so could do with being a bit bigger, I'd say. Um, let's get the right axis. So I'm just going to go over to the right hand side in the details panel and uh, under the scale and the uh, on the transform tab, set the x value uh, to 2.5. Gives us a, a longer piece of wood that we can uh, that we can work with. Post that in there like that. So again, hold Alt, drag with the move tool. I'm going to Control click, select them both. Hold Alt again, drag with the move tool. So we're just sort of building up a bigger piece of geometry that we didn't have previously, but we can sort of build out of the pieces we have available to us. Kind of looks a bit more like a fortified wall. I'm not sure what else we can add to this to make it a bit more interesting. And some pillar, stone pillar on the top maybe. Um, I think I'm going to drop that one. I think that's a little bit too high with this piece. Like so. Uh, doesn't matter so much if meshes like this are intersecting. This has kind of got weird geometry on the bottom. So I'm just going to sink that into the top of the wall. There's a nice rounded off edge like that. Two pieces like that. Cool. So it's very quick. Gives us more of a sort of fortified wall than what we had earlier. I'm just going to press save all, just save, get into the habit of doing that. Unreal has a tendency to crash when it wants to. So now we've got this rough sort of wall piece. I'm going to control click all of the meshes, all of the pieces that we use to build this. Control click, control click, like that. So now we have everything selected and when we move it, it moves around as one piece. Um, I can press control G on the keyboard, control G, like that. And that just groups the entire selection together as one. So now if we deselect it and reselect it, it selects the entire group, like so. Uh, you can also right click, uh, go to groups, press ungroup, um, which will put it back to individual meshes. So we go ahead and shift click it all again. Um, instead of pressing shift G, we can right click, go to group, press group, makes it one mesh for us, like so. So now when it's one mesh, if we click the group, Hold Alt, drag again, it'll duplicate the entire selection, like so. So I'm just going to do that again, Alt, drag, like so. 
So now we've got sort of three pieces like that. I don't really like how these uh, modularly fit together. So I'm just going to tinker around with the group, make sure it's looking fairly decent. So just try and keep in mind that we're going to use this for snap into other pieces. So um, if we spend a little bit of time now just getting it to look half decent, it's just going to save us time later down the line. And now I'm just clicking, molt dragging, making these sections of wall like so. Cool, looks a bit better. So I think we're going to get these walls all the way around the uh, the town. So I'm just going to control click all of those groups that I've just made. So now when I alt drag again, it's going to move that entire selection. A nice big piece of wall we can use just to, to block the town off so the player can't leave. Um, click, uh, press space bar, go over to your rotate tool, rotate gizmo, rotate on the Z value like that. Uh, to be honest, I might make one more, and then I'm going to rotate it. So I'm just pressing space bar to switch quickly between those uh, those commands. And there, like that. That works. <coughs> so again. Just alt, clicking on the object, holding alt, the alt key, uh, moving it with the move tool. I'm just so I hit play. Have a bit of a run around now. Let's see what we're working with. Yeah, that's pretty convincing. I'll do for now. Um, doesn't look like we're going to be able to escape that, so it's fit for purpose. It's working fine. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue blocking out the walls that we want for this town. Just as a, uh, as a quick tip about using the move tool and things. Um, when we select multiple meshes like this, so I'm control clicking, it will put the pivot point of, uh, of the selected meshes at the last mesh that you clicked. So if I try and rotate this now, so I press spacebar, try and rotate, it's going to rotate around the last mesh that I clicked, which was this one. So if I control click the first mesh again, deselect it, control click it to select it again, see how it's moved the gizmo to this one. So now when I rotate, it's rotating a much better result. It's looking exactly how I wanted it. Let's get that into position like that. So I'm just being as quick as I can. Um, I'm just getting as much sort of information as I can in there, as much geometry as I can, just to define the, uh, the play space for this level. Uh, we can make this bigger and smaller as we go through, um, but uh, it's easy to make those sort of decisions on scale and size when we've got more level finished. So I'm just going to quickly save. Um, I think now is probably a good time to start playing with the train tool again. So if we go over to the uh, landscape button again at the top, opens the uh, terrain options, um, go over to paint, I'll just try and tidy up uh, some of this uh, texture work here. So five th uh, 1000 is probably a bit too much for the size of the brush, We're working quite small. So I've set the brush size to 500, let's go in and start painting this like that. So we've got sort of a rough entrance, <coughs> rough road leading straight into the town. I think it's sort of like a, um, if this sort of area here, this end of the level, um, is more sort of farmland area, I'd like an entrance to a cave sort of around here. So if we go into the, mash, uh, the meshes folder, there's a, there's a mesh called mine, drag that into the world, uh, move it with the gizmo tool. Right, but let's try and get some elevation in the uh, in the terrain. So, back over to the landscape tab. Previously, we were on paint. Let's switch that over to sculpt, um, which gives us the sculpt tool. So, with the default sculpt sculpt tool selected, if we uh, if we just click the terrain, it'll start to raise the terrain up like that. If we hold shift and click, it'll do the opposite. So, it'll start to lower the terrain uh, into the ground pretty good for just painting quick uh, elevation into your terrains but it usually gives us quite uh, janky results 
so it's not very smooth. Um, it's not great for the player to walk on. Um, I'm not. I didn't jump then. It's just bouncing off the terrain. So because it's the floor, it's quite important that we keep this as neat and tidy as possible. So gonna control Z that. We've got a nice flat terrain again. So I'm thinking here we get a nice staircase just leading to the start of the farm area. So I'm just going to hold shift. Uh, I'm just going to cut into the terrain like that. It's gone down slightly like like so. If I uh, click the tools option we get a nice drop down list. Flatten is the, the tool we're going to use now. So we select flatten. Basically what flatten does is if I click here so I'm holding click. I'm just going to drag over the ditch we've just made. It's going to raise the ditch up to the exact level of height um, where we where we initially clicked. So if I control Z that, we sort of do the opposite of that. If I click at the bottom of the ditch, it's going to bring the terrain down around it um, to the same level. So we can just sort of start to dig out a path to this uh, this mine. Um, benefit of that is it makes the the terrain that we we drop down to nice and flat, nice and smooth. So we know that the character is going to have an easy time running on this. Um, we don't want to just jump down an empty ditch, so I'm just going to go back to the mesh folder. Um, we have a we have a mesh called stairs. I'm just going to place the stair mesh in there. So if you notice, the the size of the ditch is uh, is deeper than the size of our stairs. So the best way to do this is if we match the staircase up to the height. Of the brick road, it's about right. And then we're just going to raise up the terrain here slightly so it matches the bottom of the uh, of the staircase. So I'm going to go over to my tools options, go back to sculpt, and just lightly click. Let's keep tapping click until the terrain sort of matches the bottom of the staircase there. So now if we go back over to the tools option, click the drop down list, back to flatten, and we click, and then we're just going to bring the terrain up like so like so so now when we press play play from here we can run down the staircase into the ditch follow the ditch into the cave cool so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep uh, blocking parts of the level off so we sort of know the bounds of the level we know what we're dealing with um, it's just going to make it easier to allocate our time. Shut up, Josh. Um, <laughs> let's put the mine in position like that. Back over to the terrain. I'm just going to make the, uh, the space a little bit bigger for this uh, this mine. So just with the flatten tool out again, I'm just bringing the terrain down in this area. To be honest, it might be cool if we get maybe one more staircase in here so I think I'm going to bring this forward slightly like that back to flatten just bring the train up here so it matches the staircase like so and then back to the uh, the place tab click my staircase hold the alt key drag off with the staircase about there bring this down match the top of the uh, the terrain that we flattened earlier bring this out slightly like so back to my terrain tab landscape flatten just make sure that's all uh, correct size so I'm going to lower the terrain at this next staircase I'm going to go over to the sculpt tab uh, I'm going to hold shift when I click so that it subtracts from the selection uh, and sinks the terrain in. So I want that to be just at the bottom of the, the stair, like so. Back over to my tools, click flatten. Just bring the terrain in the area around the staircase down. So we have a nice sort of path um, leading to this cave area, like so. Back over to my place tab, click me mine. Bring that over here like so looking cool so I'm just going to tidy this up slightly flatten tool just bring the 
terrain up here. Uh, I think it makes sense if we go back over to the paint tool, stone floor. This all can be stone texture, so it looks like a like a path road uh, leading to this area. Makes sense. Maybe we have a big mountain, a big cliff sort of face. Um, if we wanted to, we could go in with the train tool, sculpt, uh, make the brush size a little bit bigger, 1500, and we click with the uh, with the sculpt tool selected. Let's raise the train up. We could just start making hills in the background like this, um, just to block off uh, the player, so it's visually obvious that we uh, that we can't go this way. But because of the the asset pack that we've got, if we go back over to the place tab, we have a load of uh, uh, tiles, uh, rocks and stones and things that we can use um, in addition with the train. So let's just drag these four rocks in. So I'm going to control click and select my four rocks, drag them into the world, wait for it to load, uh, and just space them out so we can see what we're dealing with. So we've got four rocks. Uh, so I'm thinking this cave is sort of part of a bigger uh, mountain range kind of thing. So let's go ahead and just ramp the scale up on these. So I'm going to press space, um, get my scale tool selected, uh, click the center of the three axes, um, drag that up. It's uniform scale, which makes a nice big rock for us. Uh, these meshes look quite good scaled up, um, so don't feel worried about making the meshes oversized or elongating them in any way. And I'm just using these static meshes just to infer the uh, the play space for this uh, this quick level. So move that small one out of the way. Uh, these big ones are nice. Just really quickly uh, block out your geometry. Um, you can go ahead and make sure this looks visually better um, later. For now it's just about getting the play space in there, getting the overall sort of uh, space for the player to run around in. Whoops. So I just want to go back to my drain tool, back to paint, just start making some of these areas look visually a little bit different. So thinking outside the mine, use this sort of muddy black texture. So I think let's start making these buildings make a little bit more sense now. Um, so I'm thinking maybe the town hall makes more sense for it to be there, I guess. Um, so if you look in the meshes folder, uh, we actually have a mesh for town hall, it's this one. So I could just move this over, uh, put it into place where I want it. Uh, but because I already have a building here that I placed earlier. If I make sure the town hall is highlighted in the content browser, uh, and then right click any mesh in the world, scroll down, we can replace selected actor. Um, with the static mesh we have selected in the content browser, which is the town hall. And when we click this, it'll just swap the, the other house out for the town hall. It's a quicker way for us to get meshes into the world, things like that. So I'm thinking we can use these fences. So I'm just going to drag a fence in, move this to where we want it, like that. I'm just going to alt drag. Duplicate, move them both at the same time. Position the camera, alt drag. Um, I think we leave one of these open maybe for sort of an entrance in and out of the back of the town hall. We grow some tomatoes here or something. Like that. So, what else have we got? I think this building is called the Forge. So, I'm thinking we move this maybe here. So because this is a forge, um, we can go back to the landscape tool, go over to paint, scroll down to the, the muddy ground. Because uh, we're doing sort of finer details now, make the brush size smaller, put it to about 500. And just paint the, the area around the forge. So it looks like the ground's like sort of charred or scorched where the blacksmith's been working maybe. Uh, what else is forge related? We've got an anvil. So we've been really quick. We sort of know later down the line this area will be the forge area. Um, 
when we can come in and make it visually look better at a later date. Uh, but for now, we'll just put enough geometry in there. Just to remind us, so we sort of know roughly what that area is going to be. So we only want one town hall, so I'm thinking I'm going to swap these buildings out for some sort of generic ones. Uh, we have a tavern. Uh, I'll make this the tavern, I think. We have a tavern. It's on the main street. Uh, we just want some generic houses where people would live um, just to suggest that this town is perhaps a little bit bigger than it actually is. Let's get these all sort of roughly on the same uh, like that. Uh, and I'm thinking sort of this strip here. Maybe we can make some market stalls or something. So what have we got? We've got an awning. Boxes. Mm, it's a bit of wood. So, just trying to think of sort of creative ways we can we can use the meshes we have at our disposal. It's quite thick for a thing, so we make that smaller. Then we can scale it up just on the x value like that. It's holding it into position. Like so. Cool. So now we press play. Just want to have a look at, make sure the scale of that makes sense. So even we could make this a little bit smaller, so we can see the fruit underneath it. Makes sense. Put that on there like that. So I'm going to select all these. I'm going to group them, control G. So now we have a sort of market store that we can just start throwing in to the world like that. Well, it's kind of in an awkward place now, so I'm going to move that. So I've just broke the group on this one with Shift G. Um, and I've selected just a sort of one. Uh, of these market stores we've created. So we've got duplicates in the middle. Maybe these little side ones that we can uh, we can have just to make a sort of market style area for for this town. So we know that we're gonna add uh talking NPCs at some point to this project. Um we've yet to blueprint the mechanics for that, but in our level designs we can start implementing plans for where these these mechanics will be. So go over to the characters folder. I'm going to the farmer folder. Um, we have farmer base mesh that we can use. So if we was to zoom in one of these market stalls, drag in the farmer base mesh skeletal mesh, it'll just put a man in the world that we can see. So now we press play, we find him. He's there. So it looks a little bit more interesting. He's not doing anything, he's basically just a static mesh. Um, but we know later down the line that we can come in and uh, get him speaking to us, get him saying things to the player. It's pretty cool. Uh, we do have animations, so if we wanted him to stand with his arms crossed, as an example, if we go to the Farmers folder uh, inside the Animations folder um, and drag one of these animations in, you'll notice that it's using the Hammer Girl mesh by default, uh, but she does have her arms crossed. So over on the right hand side, you can see the skeletal mesh that it's using is Hammer Girl. So we click the drop down list, we only have two skeletal meshes, which is Farmer Base Mesh and Hammer Girl Base Mesh. Change that to Farmer. And we have a Farmer with his arms crossed, like so. So we can just get a couple of these stood around. Um, using the same principle, we can get two of them talking to each other if we wanted. So we've got Farmer underscore talk. So we'll just drag that into the world. Change the mesh from Hammer Girl to Farmer. Uh, drag this one in. Change the mesh to Farmer. Like so. So now we press play. These animations should play by default. So we've got a bit more of a dynamic nature to the scene, so it looks like 
sort of a busy town. So these conceivably could be shop owners, could be uh, people trying to sell you, sell hammer girl things. Maybe one of the quests is you need to get enough money to buy something for one of these people. So uh, I've actually jumped ahead a little bit. Um, I've cut out just me adding some extra static meshes to this level just to fill it out a little bit more. Um, it's about half an hour or so just placing meshes and painting bits of the terrain and things. Um, I haven't done anything new that we haven't already been doing, uh, just duplicating meshes. Um, it's been really quick with plotting out the spa play space for the level. Um, it's really good just to try and get ideas down as fast as you can. We kind of started to see the level take shape. Um, there's no actual gameplay in it yet, we've not really put any mechanics in there. Um, the world won't react to Hammer Girl. But this is a good starting point for us to start implementing gameplay and start scripting some custom events and things. So, there's a couple of things I just want to show you guys just to, to wrap off this initial tutorial. Um, uh, I've left some areas open um, to paint some foliage in, which we're going to do now. So if we go over to the foliage tab, next to the landscape tab, click that. And this is the tool that's going to let us paint uh, meshes onto the terrain. Um, we're going to use the plants and trees that we've got available to us. So the way we add foliage to the uh, to the foliage tool, if we navigate over to the uh, hand painted environment assets and the uh, the models folder, if we scroll through here and we try and find uh, some plants, so we've got flower, flower one, flower two, and fern. So I'm just going to shift click the three flowers. Select them all like that. And I can click and drag them over to the uh, drop foliage here. Let go of that. So it's added the three mesh types to our uh, paintable brush. We can uh, adjust how much um, certain meshes uh, will paint into the world. So I've just clicked the pink flower for now. Um, if I uh, if I scroll down, the density is set to uh, to 100. So if I made this less, say to one we should see much fewer pink flowers uh, when we paint into the world, which is true. There's one there, one there, one there. Uh, so you can do that just to fine-tune the amount of flowers you want, um, or the amount of each individual mesh you want in an area. Uh, but for now, since these are just flowers, it's going to be easy for us just to whack these in. Um, if we go over to paint density at the top, set to 0.5 by default, back to 0.1. So the additional thing, um, at the moment we've got foliage ticked to be painting onto static meshes and BSPs. So if we just go ahead and untick them, uh, the foliage will only paint on the landscape then. And that'll stop us from just putting plants and things on any unwanted areas. Okay, so I've got my brush size quite small. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just paint, click and hold to paint this flower bed in. Uh, sometimes it's a bit tricky to get the meshes in little areas like this, fine tune areas like that. Uh, that's because of the density set here. So if I increase that, it should let us start to meshes and the gaps like that. So we're just clicking to paint. We can also hold shift uh, to erase. Uh, get rid of any meshes that we don't want. Um, Get rid of some clumps where there's too many meshes in an area or something. Uh, it will only paint and erase uh, any of the meshes that we've got selected. So if we wanted to get rid of all the flowers in this area, apart from the pink ones, we deselect the pink flower, uh, hold shift, and then erase. And it's erasing just the red and yellow flower, because that's all we've got selected on the left hand side. So just control Z because I kind of like that, so I'm going to leave that in there. So if we want to add some trees, get some trees on the outskirts of the town just to stop the player from seeing any areas that we don't want him to see. So in principle, scroll down in the content browser to find the trees we want. So we have pine tree, pine tree 2. Uh, is there any other trees? There's one more. Oh, there's loads. Uh, tree 1, tree 2. Tree, uh, that one as well. Um, the snowy variants of these trees, but um, we're just going to go ahead and use the, the summer ones. So let's drag that into there. Like so. so, now when we paint, uh, we only want to paint the trees that we just added. So I'm going to go ahead and unselect 
flowers. So now when we paint, we only paint trees. Uh, if you notice, the brush size is so small, uh, and the density of these trees is set to quite high. So it was just based in many trees in a, in a, in a small area, which isn't exactly what we want. So, because we've got all of these trees selected, that's pretty ridiculous. Let's go ahead and untick some of those. Uh, looks a little bit better. And uh, we just want to sort of really quickly, just really obviously block in uh, the bounds of the level. Uh, I still think probably painting too many trees there. Because uh, you always want to try and get away with as few meshes as possible. The density of all of these trees, if I control click I can edit them all at the same time, set to 100. Let's get it down to like 30. Oops, 30. Uh, so now when we paint, we get a few... That is, that is less dense than what it was previously. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that, like so. So use this as sparingly as possible because we don't want to chug the engine by Add in a million trees uh, in the surrounding areas. You can see the amount of each mesh we've used here. So we've used 133 pine trees, 143 tree ones. Um, that's way too many for, for such a small area. Uh, so I think we can do the erase density, get that down to point. Oh, can we do not? Point not five, so it's barely going to erase anything, hopefully. Um, and let's untick the pine tree so we're not going to erase the pine trees. So we'll go ahead and just start thinning these out a little bit. Um, we really, we don't want over a hundred of any of the uh, of the trees for such a small area. So I can already feel the engine starting to chug slightly, so it's good. So just with my erase density set really low, I'm just going in and just scrubbing through, holding shift when I uh, when I click, which is obviously erase. And just watching the mesh count come down ever so slightly. 171 of these pine trees. Doesn't need to be 171 pine trees. Let's go in. Try and get that number below 100. 149. Just giving the idea that the world is a bit bigger beyond the walls of this town. Um, there is no gate, so at the moment there's no way in or out of this town. It's a bit surreal. Uh, but like I said, we can always go in at a later date and add those fine tweaks to the uh, to the art assets and things. It's looking alright so far. There's a couple of areas where the trees have come through the palisade walls. These are a bit fiddly to try and erase because we don't want to erase things that we don't want to erase. So over on the left hand side, if we look for the uh, the select tool on the left, click that. That'll allow us to select individual pieces um, of the foliage le level. So I can just delete that one piece uh, move this piece to here, like this. So, because we've used the foliage tool to paint these meshes into the world, uh, they're all instance meshes, so they don't act uh, in the same way that static meshes work. So in order to select individual pieces like this, we have to make sure we go to the select tool up here. Because uh, if I was to unselect the select tool like that, if I was to click off the foliage tab and go back to the place tab, and then click a piece of foliage, you notice how it selects everything as one big foliage piece. And so you know it's been applied to the foliage layer. So if you want to edit any of those meshes, you've just got to go to the foliage tab first. And we're on paint mode at the moment, on the brush mode. Then we we'll just go down to select, and we can select individual pieces of the uh, of the foliage level. When, uh, when we create this level by default, um, if you use the default map, there should have been a light source directional light. Um, I've made a new one, but yours should be called light source. And that's just the directional light that's been added by default by the engine, uh, which is sort of like the sun. So if you select that, I've just clicked in the, uh, in the search bar at the top, search the word light, it should only have one, which is light source. Doesn't matter where this is in the world, because um, it acts like the sun, so all that really matters is the angle of it. Get my rotate tool. Now I just want to have a look at the shadows as I rotate this. Um, and just try and find a cool angle. Um, find something that looks interesting. 
something like that. So we can give that a quick build. Press build at the top, and that'll just build all the lighting information. Um, it's good to get to the habit of doing that every now and then. The more meshes you add, the longer your build times will be. Um, which is why it's good to to tackle lighting sort of an early-ish kind of stage. Um, we'd usually have done it before now, uh, but this level's not particularly big, so we're not looking at massively long loading times, which is fine. So quick inspect what that looks like. Um, so because we only have one light in the scene, uh, which is uh, our directional light, it's kind of made all the shadows go really dark. So it's sort of a cheeky way we can quickly fix that. If we search skylight, left hand side is to add an additional light. Skylight. Skylight works different to a directional light. In that it sort of just injects light into the scene from no particular angle, no particular direction. Um, so you notice when I dragged that in, all the shadows went slightly brighter, um, not as dark. It's just added sort of a overall a better sort of ambient uh, level of light into the scene, which is cool. Um, I think we can get away with that for now. Cool. So we kind of have uh, the beginnings of a of a great level. Uh, play space is defined. We know we want to add. Uh, Palisade gate wall here, so we can enter the level. We have the town that we can explore, we have the tavern, we have uh, shopkeepers that we can speak to, uh, maybe give some quests. We have a few sort of secret areas, a few sort of nooks and crannies where we can uh, we can explore, find some collectibles, smash some boxes, some crates and things. Um, let the player just have a bit of fun just running around, seeing what they can find. And ultimately, the exit of the level will be down at the mine which we made earlier end of the level so I think the next video I will have finished sort of grey boxing this level out um, and then I think I'll start implementing some of the mechanics we've got so we've already made the collectible so I'll start putting some of those in um, and then start thinking about scripting some set piece events uh, maybe some quest specific actions will happen some animations we can get in there uh, but for now, because the goal is to make a level, just using static meshes, just using the move tool, alt and move to duplicate items, we're able to get quite a nice big area. This is about phew, an hour, maybe an hour and a half worth of work. Um, and it's given us a nice starting point for future levels.